All right, this is what I've been thinking of ever since I came to be attracted to Barbos and Lille, is because of the similitude between it and Mark McKay's analysis of the last version of the E.V. Gray motor, namely the capacitance, the electrostatic capacitance set up involving the chassis of that motor and various supporting aluminum parts, I think supporting the rotors, inside that motor and they were flush and compressed air through to prevent arcing and to regulate well to, to manage the electrostatic field buildup to to prevent it from getting out of hand and they were dumping thus they were dumping their excess energy into the chassis and then flushing out the excess through the air vent rather than dumping it into a bank of batteries which not only blew up the batteries but blew up the mindset of the FCC who came in and raided them. So they had to find another way to prevent both disasters. Now I think it it might, right? It's very speculative for somebody who knows absolutely nothing about this situation. I've only heard about, about it in the last two or three days. Be that as it may, I can't help but wonder if it can be applied in this instance. Namely, you've got an electrostatic, where's my finger, electrostatic field here it's simply creating a voltage um, situation. It could be that the telluric currents riding through among and between the various rods are acting as a carrier wave upon which is applied the voltage signature coming from the sine wave inverter being pumped in here because the center row of four rods is like the center of dropping a pebble into a pond sending out ripples but because this is AC the ripples are not only going out but they're coming back in still it's a signature set of waves riding on top of the carrier wave of the Earth's telluric current waves and by pumping in your own waves and taking them out you get to collect or take possession of the carrier wave in this case the Earth and that's why it's a variable as to how strong is the telluric currents in that area and how many uh, grounding rods do you need to make up the difference because obviously a weaker field means you need a, a larger field to make up the difference so you're taking possession of the carrier wave represented by the earth by pumping in your own waves that ride on top of the carrier wave so to speak well I'm imagining the removal of this whole section here and instead trying to make this look more like the Evie Gray motor in its later, in its last incarnation that Richard Hackenberger had managed to put into place to prevent FCC embroilment. And that would mean taking the center four rods, reducing them to two, sending one down the center of each toroid, and then taking the 56 rods that surround those, what would have been those four rods, and connecting them via a wire to a chassis surrounding the whole captor se setup, this interior portion here, just this portion. And that chassis would have to be something like aluminum, lined with a dielectric on its interior face to prevent arcing, and likewise the rods going down the center of each toroid would also have to be covered with a dielectrical uh, insulated material to prevent arcing and so we have a capacitor of two plates the interior and the exterior the two rods being the interior and the chassis being the exterior and then pump flushed air through to make sure definitely no ionic pathways get formed that would encourage arcing uh, because arcing would kill the dipole that you're trying to set up here moved over to here um, but I'm supposing, I'm speculating that it's applicable. The EV Gray setup is applicable. And this is, you know, this has nothing to do with the pulsed, you know, motor aspect of EV Gray. This only has to do with the capacitance set up between the chassis and certain aluminum elements inside the chassis that are supporting certain electromagnets. I forget which ones, if they're the rotors or the satters. I'll say it's the rotors, but it might be the other way around, or it might be both. And that was gleaned from various files that I only found on one location on the internet. It's funny we, we hear talk about Mark McKay's analysis, 
but it was literally like stumbling across them or searching for them that I found those files and I've reposted them all to two locations and uh, you know so <laughs> I didn't ask permission I just did it because I think those files are so precious um, but it really gives us the outlook that we needed to make that extra analysis possible so maybe it's applicable maybe it's not applicable I don't know I'm just supposing it's a possible workaround for grounding rods is to collect an electrostatic charge and maintain it and regulate it within a chassis situation and funnily enough um, Clarence does make um, a little hint to somebody hey you know clean up your circuitry it looks kinda sloppy put it inside an aluminum project case and I thought to myself oh gee I wonder if he's making a uh, unbeknownst to anybody else the same suggestion here in a sense hint hint or did he just say it you know without necessarily understanding how it could be put to additional use to augment or to I should say vary the geometry of the circuit design so that's my little two cents worth for what it is how about less than two cents how about point zero 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 two cents whatever <laughs> To further try to explain the principle, um, I'm going to take two uh, approaches. One is an example that looks very much like it could be defined as Tesla's trimetal generator because right in here we have a capacitor made of a copper plate on one side and an aluminum plate on the other. And next to it is an iron core transformer, or in this case met glass cobalt. Uh, it looks like it could be iron. Let's you know. I'm I'm stretching it a little, but la that looks like um, a possible setup that would could qualify as a trimetal generator of sorts. But then there's this other uh, situation in which is explained or described a ferrite core sandwiched between two capacitor plates. Now all of this is part of a file that I got off of the Patrick Kelly website. The file is called vladimirutkin.pdf That's the name of the file. Um, so I thought I'd bring this up because um, it sounds very much like what I was considering, namely um, an electromagnetic coil sandwiched between two um, referencing plates of a capacitor arrangement, which in essence is kind of like an EV gray motor when we consider the chassis surrounding all of the elements within which is generated an electrostatic field but regulated by flushing uh, compressed air through it in that instance anyway I just thought I'd bring this up 